Hi, welcome back to Understanding Gradle. This time I want to talk about how you can publish parts of your projects as libraries to repositories. Before we jump into this, let's have a look at what a repository is and how the term Maven plays into it. So when we talk about Maven, often the Maven build tool comes to mind as an alternative to Gradle. But Maven also stands for Maven repositories, which are repositories that follow a certain layout how artifacts are located in them. We know by now that components are identified by group, name and version. A Maven repository follows a certain layout how the directories are named after the group's name and the version and how the artifacts are placed into them and also how they are named. Using this fixed layout, Maven and Gradle and other tools know how to find the artifacts that belong to a certain version of a certain component in the repository. And also how to query the repository to find out which versions of a certain component are available. Technically, such a repository can be hosted using repository management software like Artifactory or Nexus, or it can also just be a folder on a disk. The important thing is that the folder structure follows the layout that a Maven repository should have. Looking at it this way, the Maven repository has nothing to do with the Maven build tool directly. You can use it totally independent. The important thing is that it is an agreed on structure so that both Maven and Gradle can read components from the repository and know where to find them. As we've already seen in the video about capability conflicts, next to the artifacts, a component also consists of metadata. Because the repository structure only defines where artifacts are located, but not what's in them, additional metadata can be added by individual tools. That's how the Gradle metadata is added, which only Gradle understands, while the POM metadata is understood by both Maven and Gradle. If you publish libraries from Gradle to a Maven repository, Gradle will add the POM and the module metadata, so if such a library is used by Maven, it can still get a certain amount of information about the library out of the POM file. If you only work with Gradle and publish libraries in your own repositories and use it again with Gradle, you don't need to care about this. If you publish to open source Maven repository like Maven Central, then you should think about what happens if someone using Maven consumes your library that only reads the POM metadata. The other way around, if you publish a library with Maven, there's a plugin I developed that you can use to also publish Gradle metadata so that you can, for example, provide capability information for Gradle users. The main takeaway here is, if the term Maven comes up in the context of a Gradle build, it refers to the Maven repository layout. With that in mind, let's jump into our example to see how you publish a library to a Maven repository with Gradle. The main and ideally only difference between a component that is published and the equivalent component from source is that the published component needs a version. So we make sure that all our libraries are versioned by setting a version in our base convention plugin. We go into our convention plugin for libraries. Here we apply an additional plugin called Maven Publish. It's called Maven Publish because it allows us to publish to Maven repositories. Once the plugin is applied, the Java library plugin will already configure most of the things for us. There's only a little bit of boilerplate to add and we need to tell Gradle to which repository we would like to publish our libraries. The publishing plugin provides the publishing extension for this. The first thing is we create a publication of type Maven publication, which basically again tells Gradle that this is something that should go into a Maven repository. This is something Gradle probably could do automatically. You can choose an arbitrary name for this. The only place where this will be used is in tasks that perform the publication. Next, we tell Gradle to configure the publication from the Java component. So this components concept here is something that's in the core of Gradle. Again, this is a little bit confusing because the term component is so overloaded. And this API is also not used much in Gradle. It is more like an idea that was developed at some point and will maybe further evolve in the future. A component is the place where we tell Gradle which information about the project and which artifacts should be published. Usually, a core plugin or a community plugin like the Android plugin already configure components for us and we don't need to do anything ourselves. In this case, we use the Java component that is already configured by the Java library plugin. The main information the component forwards to the publishing mechanism is the coordinates of our library, like the name, group and version we have configured, and then the different so-called variants that are published, 
which are the dependencies and the artifacts attached to them. These are extracted from the consumable configurations, which are the API elements and runtime elements in the case of Java. Check out my video on declaring dependencies for more explanations on this. We'll also talk a bit more about consumable configurations variants in the next video. There are ways you can customize the component further if you need to. We won't go into this today, but I'll link the documentation in the GitHub page associated with this video. So as you see on the APIs, in theory, a project could have multiple components and also multiple publications based on the components. In a good setup, a project should have one component and one publication and should not add more information or modify information when creating the component or the publication on top of what is provided from the project. Because then the published component will look similar as the pro local project to Gradle. So then if we use the component or library we are publishing in a place of our build, it won't really matter if we use the local version of it or the published version. The information that's seen to the outside by other components is the same. Now let's also configure a repository in the publishing block. This may be a repository you already configured in your settings Gradle for retrieving and finding components. Here we tell Gradle to use the repository to publish the components. If you get started with this, you could just use a local folder, which can act as a repository already. If you want to publish to a remote repository on the server, you can use the URL of your repository here. If you need to provide more information, like credentials for a remote repository, you can open a configuration block here and add this. I'll link documentation for more details on this. We have now configured publishing in our convention plugin for our libraries, and now it's available for all our library projects. There's a new lifecycle task available now called Publish. Let's call this task for our shared utils library project. If we look into the repository afterwards, we see that the jar has been published, the metadata files, and checksums for all the files. Now that our shared utils library has been published, we could use the published version in our project. We developed this library in a separate Gradle project called My Other Project, which we included in the settings file. So in the settings file, we can now replace the include build to My Other Project with a reference to our local repository. And since shared utils is now published and with that versioned, we also need to define which version we want to use. I'll do it in the dependency constraints block of our base convention plugin, but you may do it in different places. See my video on centralizing dependency version declarations. If we now look at the dependency graph of the compile class path of our services library, which uses the shared utils, we can see how it now resolved to the published version of the library. If we include the local version again and compare the two graphs, we can see that Gradle now uses the local version again. Because if a version is available locally in an included build, Gradle will always prefer that one. But as you see, we didn't even touch any of the build scripts or the dependencies. Because for the project depending on shared utils, it doesn't matter if Gradle builds the version locally or retrieves it from a repository. And by the way, you can publish Gradle plugins just as you publish libraries or repositories. So you can also publish your build logic or your convention plugins. Just remember that then you need to add the repository to the plugin management block. Publishing is a way to further detangle the development of individual components in larger projects. When you publish, the components are versioned and you could use different versions in different places. Of course, that comes at the cost that you have to start managing the versions of your own components. Still, the include build mechanism of Gradle allows you to seamlessly switch between published versions and source versions of components. There may be cases where you would like to publish other things like different files and jar files. We'll touch on that in the next video. Until then, consider subscribing to this channel and please leave questions in the comments. You can also visit the GitHub page associated with this video to try out things yourself. See you next time.